Great. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's NF Core Bite Size Talk. Uh, my name is Phil Yules, and today I will be talking to you about the uh, NF Core modules patch functionality. This is a, a sort of fairly simple functionality. So I'm thinking today's um, today's bite size talk will be fairly short. Um, stop screen sharing while I'm talking. Um, so, but it's also many people don't know that it exists, and I think it could be quite useful, um, especially for people using NF Core tooling and the NF Core templates or pipelines, which are kind of private or custom pipelines which are not going to be part of the main nf core organization this is where this this tooling really really kind of shines so um yeah if you want to use the nf core template for stuff you're doing in-house this talk is for you um i don't have any slides or anything it's just going to be kind of a, a live demo i'm going to walk through how i use it and try and describe what it's doing in the back end um, and hopefully that all will, will make sense to you all uh we'll see how it goes live those of you who have seen me talk before will know that i i love a good live demo things usually go wrong but that's part of the fun of it <laughs> so uh let's uh join me on this on this roller coaster so um just before i kind of kick off a little bit of background information what we're we talking about here um so for those of you familiar with this apologies but just to get everyone up to the same level with nf core we have um, a pipeline template uh, for the whole pipeline and then in the last kind of year or two with with dsl2 we've been working with modules and these are wrappers around specific tools um, so this isn't on pipeline level pipeline level is one workflow all the way through start to end analysis and the module is just a single tool um, and we have shared modules which people can collaborate on and which you can install into a pipeline then when you make changes to a module, which is a centralized module, those changes can be easily integrated to, into every pipeline that it's using, using that module. So the classic example and the one I'm going to be working with today would be FastQC, a QC tool for DNA sequencing data used by, I don't know how many pipelines within NF Core, but very many. Uh, we've been chatting on Slack yesterday and today about some updates. There's a new version of multi-QC that's come out and it's got some new options like minus minus memory, uh, minus minus SVG and stuff. And we've been talking about those updates and we can just do that in one pull request, one discussion on one module. And then all the pipelines can just pull in those changes um, across the board and get that new functionality, which is fantastic. So pipelines, modules. Um, in order to make all of this system work, uh, it's really important that uh, the, the code within the pipelines, uh, the modules within the pipeline, is the same as the code in the central modules repository. That makes sense. If you want to synchronize the two, um, you need to kind of keep them keep them tightly together. What that means, though, is you can't change the code in your pipeline. If you do that, the NF Core code linter will start complaining and tell you that you've not allowed to do that. <laughs> so um, what people have done before then is you take the centralized uh, NF Core module uh, and you just copy it as a local module and then you can do whatever you want with it you can change it and the linter won't complain but the downside of doing that is you're no longer in sync so if there are updates that come into a centralized module you won't see them you won't be able to pull them in and you're sort of effectively losing that collaborative aspect which is so powerful so this is where nf core modules patch comes in as a sort of a stopgap, if you like um a way for you to make changes to central modules in your pipeline in your pipeline alone uh, whilst keeping that link, while keeping the link to happy, while keeping all the functionality about updating modules and so on. Hopefully that makes sense. If you want to ask me any questions at this point, shout. Otherwise, we can take questions at the end. Otherwise, I will dive into a screen share and let's show you how this thing works. So hopefully you can now all see my, my, my setup going to make the zoom tool about as small as possible. So uh, my my pet pipeline is uh, the NF core methyl seek pipeline. Uh, it's one of the first ones I ever wrote, and it's one that I'm still fairly involved with um, the maintenance for. So uh, hopefully everyone is familiar with the uh, idea of an NF core lint command, which runs all the code tests on every single uh, module and all parts of the pipeline. Today, for live demo purposes, I'm going to do modules lint, which just only lints the modules uh, and not the entire pipeline and i'm actually going to make it just the fast qc module so things work nice and quickly um so if i run linting make it a bit bigger 
uh, you can see that basically everything's fine. Um, my pipeline's up to date with the central dev version of MethylSeq, and I've got a couple of warnings about this module, but there's a, a new version of software available and there's a new version of a central module available. But they're both warnings, they're not failures. So I'm, I'm, that's my kind of starting point. Right, we were talking about new FastQC functionality. So I'm just, this is VS Code. I'm looking at the MethylSeq pipeline source code now. This is not the central meth modules repo. This is my pipeline. Uh, so if I go into modules, I've got the local ones and I've got NF core. Scroll down, you can see I've got the FastQC one, and this is the shared FastQC module. Now I could make changes and drop it into local, but I'm not going to do that today. So let's say that things are moving too slowly. <laughs> I don't know. I want to do something here myself. Uh, what I can do is um, drop something custom in here. So let's say val SVG. I'm going to have a new input channel uh, to handle these SVGs, and I want to do it just on my pipeline. Um, and I'm going to hit save. So, you know, assume that I'm doing some valid change here and I've tested locally in the next flow side of things it's working fine and it's doing what I want. Now, if I rerun this linting test, it's going to be unhappy with me because this lint test checks the version on the web on the NF core modules repository, looks at the code there and checks the code that I have locally. And in this case, it says uh -uh, these, this code does not match the version of the module that you say you have. Um, and so that's a hard failure. All the CIA, all the continuous integration tests on GitHub will start giving a red cross and failing. Um, and this is this is a, not a good situation. So this is normally where you freak out and copy it to local or something. Um, but now I'm going to do some magic. So now I do NF core modules patch. I run this command um, to ask me which which module I want to do it for. The fast QC. That's where I've made my changes. Um, and it just very quickly spits out some content. First things first, this is a diff. So this is where it's looked at the, the remote file and the local file for any changes. And you can see it's picked up here that there's some code in my local chain copy, which has changed. So this, this looks right. This is what I just added. So it says there's an extra line here. Um, now these diff files are really cool because uh, with diff, you can you can generate these kind of these diff files or patch files, and you can apply them on top of other files. So we can reapply this change at any time. Uh, and that's what we do. We save this diff. And if I go to uh, get status, you can see I've got uh, changes to my modules.json file, which is used by NFCore to track the synchronization between my local pipeline and the shared modules rep repository. I've got the changes in the, the FastQC file, which is the, the thing I just edited and saved. And I've got a new file here called um, fastqc.diff. If I go back into VS Code, we can see that this diff file is just what was printed to the, the console here. Um, and it's just saying alongside the fastqc module, hey, I've got some local changes here. And then if I go into modules.schema, you can see if I find fastqc, that we've got a new line that's been added in the, the JSON file here, and it's just telling NFCore that there is a patch file that exists and in this location. Okay, so great, what does that do? Uh, I can add all of this. Let's make a new branch. Um, so now if I go back to the, the lint commands, NFCore modules lint, which was failing, we're back to our starting position. Everything's fine, everything's happy. Now, just to explain what's going on here, in the background, I've still got those local changes, but in the background, when I do NFCore lint, uh, the NFCore code is fetching the remote version from the NFCore modules repository, but then it knows that I have a patch file, that diff file, and so it stores that local copy it's got from the web, it applies the patch file on top, and then it compares. And that's why there are no changes. If I make some more changes in here again, so val some foo, then that's not going to be in the patch file and it's going to fail. Or well, in fact, it, it did a hard failure where it couldn't even figure out uh, what, what was going on if I do it in a different place here. Uh, path foo.yaml. Then it will just fail again and say that say that something has changed. Uh, and then I could run NF core modules patch again. It will update that diff file so that now those new changes are covered by the, by, the, by the diff and everything will work again. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, what's cool is it's not just linting this applies to. The same process works when I update pipelines. 
uh, modules, sorry. So we've got this lint warning that there's a new version of this module available. So I can also do NF core modules uh, update. Uh, let's just do FastQC. Um, and hopefully, yes, there we go. Uh, it has updated the module for me. So it's gone to the NF core remote with, with a shared one and it's updated my local copy and then it's managed to still reapply the patch file on top of the new updated version and save that there so nf core update still works which is like kind of magic i think um and we can see these are all the new changes that have come in so there's a new git sha for this module uh, for the latest version and then you can see the changes which happened when i updated the module right Hopefully that's all you need to know. Everything works beautifully, but I thought for completeness, I would also show you one small complication of when things could go wrong. We got a hint of it a second ago, actually. Um, something that could happen is if we, um, if I, in fact, if I do reset, uh, one, so we just go back to uh, when we first made the patch before we updated. Now I can um, add a different change here. So now I'm going to add minus minus SVG onto the fastqc command itself. Um, Git diff, you can see it's the same. NF core modules, lint fastqc, you can see it's the same. It's, this is all the same. NF core modules, patch fastqc. Uh, yes, regenerate the patch. Okay, so now our patch file has got two changes here. That's good. Um, and NF core modules lint fastqc. Okay, so it's a second change, but everything is exactly the same so far. Now the the, the tricky bit comes now. If I go to NF core modules update fastqc, like just like I did before, it will fail. Um, now what's happened here? I've got a couple of warning messages saying it's failed to apply the patch. You will have to apply the patch manually. So basically, this is a little bit like when you are working on code and you put in a pull request and you get a merge conflict. There have been changes that have happened on the central NF core modules repository. Uh, and there have been my local changes, which I've done with those patch files. And the tool can't automatically figure out how to reconcile those two changes. Um, so basically what it's done is it's just clobbered my local changes. Um, if I go in here, you can see it's made the updates, but I've lost all my custom changes and it's just overwritten it with, um, with, uh, what was on the remote copy. So all I have to do is I have to go back in and I have to just recreate this patch. Um, so I can go back in and go minus, minus, minus SVG and, and val SVG and then rerun an F core modules patch. That's fine. So just bear that in mind. Sometimes when you do updates and you have local patches, you might need to do a little bit of fiddling. Just be careful with always running and uh, git commit <laughs> before you do stuff, because then you don't lose anything and you can easily see which which changes are happening. Right. That's my live demo. Um, hopefully everybody followed along with that and, and it made sense. Um, Yes, sorry. <laughs> Fran says in the comments that when I said earlier about shouting, you, you can shout literally if you want to, but I also meant just you can you can you can ask. <laughs> uh, so happy to take any questions, and hopefully this will be uh, be useful for some of you. Yeah, so you can unmute yourself now um, if you want to uh, to ask questions. Lots of happy people. Very few questions. That's good. It's quite a nice, neat little small topic to discuss. So uh, I had plenty of time for it. <laughs> sure. But what, what happens if you realize that you actually have more changes than you actually want to include? Like if there's some things that make the whole pipeline fail or whatever, can you undo the patch? When, when you do the update, you mean? No. Um, when you... You, you have written something, you get errors, and it's like, ah, but this is because I did something manual that uh, I want to be different. So you do the patch, and then you realize, oops, actually, that was something completely different and messed everything up. Then it's no different if you made changes in any other way. You just 
you just go back and you you look at your git changes and you revert in git or whatever um th this is kind of this part of the workflow is specific to just the nf core tooling just the linting the updating so it's kind of coming in at the end once you've already fiddled around and made nextflow and your pipeline work properly in the way okay. you want to. cool then uh thank you very much very much um also thank you everyone for listening and as usual i would like to thank the Jan Zuckerberg Initiative for funding our bite-sized talks. <laughs> and hello also to Maxime. <laughs>